This episode of Star Wars in a Galaxy was recorded and produced during the 2023 sag after strikes. Without the labor of the actors currently on strike, the stories being covered here wouldn't exist. Thank you, and enjoy this episode of In a Galaxy. Hello there. there. Welcome back to another episode of Star Wars in a Galaxy. Watching all the stars we can get a hands on. I'm Eli. I'm Jacob. And we have arrived in another special episode. We just finished season 14 of Star Wars in a Galaxy talking about Jedi Fallen Order. Um, oh. Next week, we are, of course, going to begin talking about Solo, a Star Wars story for, 15, for season 15 of Star Wars in a Galaxy. But you know how we do this. After we finish the season, we do a special episode. And we have a fun one today. Uh, we have several, like, series of special episodes going and one we hadn't done in a while and one that i feel like we need to revisit is our character appreciation day as you know we've done this for past characters ahsoka tano uh mon mothma obi-wan kenobi ochi of festoon we've done those for all those characters um uh and now we are lo- taking a look at the dark lord of the sith the main villain of the star wars saga darth Sidious or Chief Palpatine, but I, 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 I'm gonna officially call this one Darth Sidious because I, no offense to Palpatine and, and Chief Palpatine as a name, I think it's cool, but I, Darth Sidious for me is one of the most iconic Star Wars names of all time. That's interesting because I always think of when in my mind he always is Palpatine, but yeah, I mean, Sidious I, is a great Sidious I mean, is a great I usually think name. of him as Palpatine too, but like. But I, I just love Darth Sidious just because yeah. it's I think it carries so much more weight because you, you, it, put, you know, it puts like him Palpatine. in the Sith lineage. Yeah. And also it, it's like you because it's his secret identity. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, definitely. We hear Palpatine all the time. But when we hear Darth Sidious, that's when you know shit's getting real. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, it put, yeah, it, it, different light. Absolutely. OK, so um we're, we're jacob and i have both uh filled out like a little bit of a form beforehand on how we're going uh, uh, um in accordance with how we usually do these episodes um so first we have uh where jacob and i look up five fun facts about our character and selection uh five fun facts about our city is jacob why don't you go ahead with our first very fun fact oh yeah this is a fun fact this is one of my favorite fun facts about sidious it comes from among other things the it, it it is a legends fun fact it's from the 2005 book star wars complete locations um among among other things wow so during his cut. time yeah this is a deep cut but i've known about this for a while and it's one of my favorite things because i think oh, it is I so think I dead on i might know what you're going for sidious during his time as chancellor palpatine had a 4000 year old masasi freeze now a freeze is a sort of of um oh yeah stone carving portrayal of something that you that you put in a wall and it's a bit free, three-dimensional of the great it's known as the great hyperspace war boss relief he had it in his office and it depicts the ferocious battle between the jedi and sith of the great hyperspace war now the jedi believed that it was a nod of respect to the jedi order but in fact it was darth sidious glorifying the sith and putting his allegiance to the sith hidden in plain sight that's one that's of my fantastic. favorite facts of all time it's it's so sidious it's so it's so devilish. How did the Jedi not know? Who knows? Again, you know? he hid it in plain sight. He he dressed yeah. it up as something else, which is what Palpatine's the master of doing. Yeah. Um, Surely the fact uh, it was made by ancient Sith couldn't have given it away. <laughs> no. But yeah, that's not. that's Palpatine for you. That's um, Palpatine for you. Yeah. No. Uh, I there that reminds me of like the I, there there. I think this is also legends. The information that he was into like a certain galactic poet. Whose works were dark and often offensive, <laughs> um, and the Jedi were like, "Yeah, what a weird, quirky little guy." <laughs> but like, it's really because he was a bloodthirsty, sadistic bastard. Yeah. Um, uh, my first fact is I, that I, this is one that I didn't know when I started researching this one. Um, is is that George Lucas specifically wanted him to to um, 
resemble the personification of death in the Swedish film The Seventh Seal. Um, wow. Uh, I think it's Swedish. I don't know. It's it's some European country. Let me let me look this up very quickly. Seventh Seal. It's um. Yeah, it's Swedish. It's it's an Ingmar it's an Ingmar Bergman film. Um, believe oh, it or okay. not, one of the actors in um uh, the Seventh Seal would later go on to be in a Star Wars movie. Uh, that would be Max von Sydow, who was uh, a character in the Seventh Seal and who is also Lor Santeca in Star Wars: wow. The Force Awakens. Look at that. Yeah. By the way, this film was was released in 1957. So this so, was this was young young Max von this Sydow. Was, well, no, because Max von Sydow, I was looking this up because I wanted to see exactly. No, no, it's more that Force Awakens is old old Max von Sydow. <laughs> Because Max von Sydow, so how old, how old was he in 1957? Late 20s. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was. He was. He was born in the late 1920s. He oh he gosh. unfortunately passed away a few years ago. Um, but he Wait, was. So in we his, see in his 90s when he was in the Force Awakens. He was. He was in his late 80s when he was in the Force Awakens. Wow. Yeah. I mean, he oh doesn't do that much, but like, yeah. I liked his role. He had some banger lines. He, he, you cannot he, he deny the cool, truth that is your family. I'm not saying like, like that, that that he's not a good character because I think he is a good character, but like I'm not saying that. Logistically, you're saying that. Lo- logistically speaking, he did not do that much in that movie. You know Fair I mean? enough. Yeah, like logistically speaking, he was there for one scene and he just kind of sat there and said stuff. The stuff was interesting, but you know, uh, yeah. Um, also, Max von Sydow. Uh, I'm gonna m- make a lot of references to other movies that I like people in. Max von Sydow is the villain in one of my favorite movies of all time, um, which is also a Star Wars connection. Um, and I would love to watch for In a Galaxy if 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 you would indulge me some time to do this, <laughs> uh, because it does connect to Star Wars in a very real way. Um, Maybe we should. Which is Flash Gordon oh. um, from 1980, <laughs> which. If you don't know, Star Wars was originally Lucas trying to adapt Flash Gordon into a film. And then uh, uh, the company that owned Flash Gordon eventually did follow the success of Star Wars in 1977. Um, and so in 1980, I believe it was, they got they, they did Flash Gordon. It was a flop. It was most people hated it. It is Aww. not like I, I won't. Here's the thing. It's a, definitely a guilty pleasure of mine. It's it's it's. It's the stupid kind of fun. Um, mm, okay. But the villain, Ming the Merciless, is played by Max von Sydow. Wow. Also, by the way, did I mention that it has one of the greatest scores in the history of, of scores and soundtracks? You did not. Because it's done by Queen. <laughs> wow. Like, the band Queen. Like, the Freddie no Mercury kidding. Queen. Yeah. It's an entire rock soundtrack to Queen. Um, wow. They wrote it for this movie, it, it's it's fantastic. I love that movie so much. Um, it's it's so stupid and so fun. Um, but yeah, next one to doubt. Um, illustrious career. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what is your next fact? My next fun fact, also about Palpatine's office. He actually, in an even more brazen move, he hid one of his two golden lightsabers in a sculpture on his desk during his time as chancellor that's that's palpatine for you, you know if that if, yeah. if that isn't palpatine i don't know what is yeah just i will add in a bonus fact that i remember researching when i was doing this but i didn't actually include which is the character that uh, palpatine was based on was a character named senator palantine in the film taxi driver oh yeah i saw that one too um, i found that as well and that Palpatine's uh, like concealed golden lightsaber is a nod to Palantine's concealed golden handgun in Taxi Driver. No kidding. Wow. Yeah, that's an extra one for, y- for y'all. I didn't have that <laughs> one in, but it, it just reminded me when you were talking yeah. about the hidden golden lightsaber. I mean, I guess, yeah, Palantine's, Palantine's pistol, Palpatine's lightsaber. There you go. Yep. What do you got for us next, Eli? Number two. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, of course, because Palpatine was in, in, uh, Star Wars Clone Wars, 
um, unfortunately, midway into the Clone Wars, um, midway into the production of the fifth season, the original voice actor who voiced Palpatine in the film and in the first four, most of the fifth season of the Clone Wars, um, uh, Ian Abercrombie passed away. Um, uh, but this, this, this fact is not about even Ian Abercrombie. This fact is about who they got to replace him because um, they, did a, they did a very extensive search despite the fact that Palpatine was well, like Palpatine was only needed for one like the the last half of one episode of um the last half of one episode of the Clone Wars in season five and then um in like a few episodes for season six. But they like cast a wide net. They really searched. And the person they came up with is Tim Curry. Um who if you don't know Tim Curry, he's a he's a great actor. He's been in a lot of different things. He was in um uh the thing I first saw him in was he was in the nineteen eighties Annie film. He was Brewster in the nineteen eighties Annie film, which is fantastic. <laughs> wow. Um he was also um Long John Silver in Muppets Treasure Island. Wow. Um he he he's been in uh, so many great stuff and he's um He's a, he's a he's a he's a great actor um and so like i remember because you know you i feel like you can tell a little bit like obviously um he tried to um he tried to imitate abercrombie's um version of palpatine as best he could but obviously their voices aren't the same uh but so but like it's just so weird to me that of all the people it's Tim Curry as um as yeah. a Palpatine. Of everyone, it was Tim Curry. It's Rooster from Annie. Star Wars is crazy like that sometimes. Star Wars is the weird. <laughs> Star Wars Star Wars When it comes to Star Wars, it'd be like that sometimes. It'd be like that sometimes. Right. Number three for you. Number three for me. Now this this to me is a very very interesting, interesting fact. So in 2019, um, StarWars.com interviewed George Lucas, among other people, um, and, they made, and, they, and they published this interview called The Phantom Menace, an Oral History. And in that, George Lucas actually confirms that Richard Nixon was the main real-life inspiration for Palpatine in Star Wars. This is his quote. Yeah. I edited a bit um, to, to just have the best parts, but the inspiration for Star Wars, one of the very first ideas, was when Richard Nixon tried to change the Constitution so that he could run for a third term. We all know that he was a crook. He was a bad guy. He did terrible things, and we sort of chugged along with it. But it wasn't until the impeachment, and really even later, that we understood how completely corrupt he was. But then that was the idea, which was how does democracy crumble? How does it die? Would the people vote for it? There's an outside threat, and that threat allows the tyrant to take over. And the populace gives up the democratic powers, and this guy is suddenly running the show. You end up with the Empire. And people say that Star Wars isn't political. My god. If, 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 if people paid attention to the motherfucking prequels, I mean, like, really, even the, the, the originals, too, but, like... All of them. The all of them. The, the, yeah, but I, I'm just saying, like, 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 most people say, oh, Disney made Star Wars political and stuff like that. Yeah, 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 if people yeah. paid attention to the fucking prequels, with the Galactic Senate and characters The Corporate named after, Alliance, the Trade and, Federation. And characters named after Trent Lott, Ronald Reagan, Newt Gingrich. Yeah, I mean Halliburton. The main when, villain when is literally Lucas, Newt Gunray. Yeah. The the Halle Bertoni. Halle Bertoni. It's amazing. When, when when George Lucas said that the that the closest real life politician to Darth Vader is Dick Cheney. <laughs> That's man. You gotta love George Lucas sometimes, man. This he's, is he's hilarious. All, when 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 he adapted part of George Lucas's speech, um, from shortly after nine eleven to be part of Anakin's monologue to Obi Wan as he's becoming Darth Vader. Yeah, that is that that is one hundred percent true. If you're not with us, you're with the terrorists. Became if you're not with me, then you're my enemy. Direct, like, direct transfer. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. 
uh, all right. No, that was a great one. Um, Maybe my that might be my favorite. That might be my favorite fun fact. I think this might be my favorite. <laughs> the third one might be my favorite as well, actually. All right, let's hear it. Let's talk about the line that everybody hates on the internet. Um, and we're going to get into this a little bit. And it's not going to go the way you think it's going to go. We're going to talk about somehow Palpatine turned. People hated this line. People I still hated hate this, this line, line to this day. I, I know, but you're <laughs> I think you have a different reason for the one I'm going to 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 pick apart here. People hated okay. this line as if it never happened before. As if Palpatine in Legends died, confirmed on the second Death Star, and never came back at all. Let me introduce you to Dark Empire, everybody. Dark mm. Empire is basically if 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 the like if what Dave and John are doing right now with with the Grogu saga and the Mandalorian and all those other shows is going to be their canon adaptation of the Thrawn trilogy by Timothy Zahn, which I think in some way, shape, or form it is, then I would say that the that the sequel trilogy is best analog in Legends is Dark Empire, which is this comic series in the 90s. Absolutely. Um, where Palpatine returned in bodies of clones not once, but multiple times. He even implied, though Leland Chi actually um, later, who from uh, who's the holocron keeper at Lucasfilm, later clarified on this path that he was lying. He, he But he even claimed that he had done this during the events of the original trilogy at some point. Again, he was lying, but uh, and I because I don't think they wanted to complicate Palpatine's story that much. But Palpatine came back multiple times in bodies of clones. He had his own personal retreat world where he gathered all of his followers. No, it's not yeah. called Exegol, it was called Bis. Um, he had you know all of these like former Imperials working for him. Uh, it was you know it wasn't it wasn't thirty years after the end of the original trilogy. It was more like ten. Um, Luke yeah. briefly turned to the dark side. You know he had he had these ships called World Devastators that could like cause cyclones and like natural like natural disasters that could absolutely obliterate the balance of life on any world. It's not exactly planned and strong Star Destroyers, but it's very close. The similarities are striking. The similarities yes, are incredibly striking. So I don't want to hear, no matter what problem you have with somehow about return, I don't want to hear that it's unprecedented because it is so incredibly precedented because it happened this way and honestly and honestly crazier in Legends. It like 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 Palpatine Palpatine was eventually defeated by basically this former Jedi Knight from the new from the old Republic um, named Empire Toja Jaios Brand basically absorbing his dark force energy and dying to basically snuff out his spirit. Yeah, crazy stuff. Crazy shit. Dark Empire was absolute insanity, and somehow Palpatine returned multiple times in multiple different clone bodies. In uh. In uh, also he also had kids, <laughs> um, uh, that were probably also conceived, not like created, like, um, like in canon. But he had probably had kids in Legends too. For more on that, um, look, uh, check out the uh, Jedi Prince, uh, series in Legends about um his, uh, kids Trioculus and those people. If you want a good, I will link this down in the description. The Bombad cast did a really great cover of this with a, a other great friend of the show, Michael McCoy, who's a huge fan of the Jedi Prince novels. Um, uh, I'll have to check that out. That sounds really cool. Go ahead for your number four. Number four. In the original drafts of The Empire Strikes Back, in the original Star Wars, Palpatine was not intended to be a Sith Lord, but actually... Not a Force user at all, just a corrupt politician. However, when Lucas eventually decided that Vader and Anakin should be the same person, Anakin's fall, of course, took on the central role in the story. So, of course, Palpatine became a Sith Lord who rose to power in part by seducing Anakin to the dark side. But I just think it's very interesting and very telling that his original role, his, his, the, the original nature of his character, 
was one of being a corrupt politician. And honestly, I think that that could have worked for the story in some ways. Maybe not for the prequels, but for the originals, perhaps it could have. Return of the Jedi would have been different. But... Well, I, yeah, well, I think that the idea was that Palpatine's rise was more facilitated because I saw some of the same stuff while I was researching. The idea that Palpatine's rise was instead facilitated by greedy bureaucrats like Tarkin. Um, so, like, the main villains of Star Wars would no longer be Palpatine. It would be Tarkin and people like him and Piet. And yeah, all his people. Krennic yeah, for sure. And, I mean, obviously Krennic didn't exist then, but, like, people like those kind of people who just wanted an autocratic regime. And Vader just kind of fell to the dark side and served as the, the well- the the well-meaning but absolutely corrupt uh politician uh who was the emperor yeah um for sure. i i do like the direction they took yeah um just generally i right. um i uh number four based on his um uh ian mcdermott uh based his characters on um unusual voice um there's a japanese method of um vocal production where you actually produce your voice not from your throat or your chest, but from your stomach. That's how he gets that voice. Um, of, I mean, of course, like the Palpatine is Chancellor Palpatine is his normal speaking voice, but use your aggressive feelings, boy. Let the hate flow through you. That that is all through the stomach, and um, I like to think I have a pretty decent Palpatine impression. And that is that I I've I've known that specific fact for a while, and I've always used that the projection from the stomach is the key. Yeah, Eli, you're not going to believe what my fifth fact was. What you're not going to believe what my fifth fact was. It was also Palpatine's voice and how Ian McDermott came up with it. Um, but yeah, you know McDermott found, you know he convinced Lucas, he convinced Richard Marquand to let him make the make the vocal style his own because they hadn't quite made up their minds yet and well the rest is history you know yeah absolutely it's um it's a great um uh it, it's it's a great little factoid and, and something that yeah it's, it's um i love um five is is a, is an is an observation that was on, on wikipedia while i was looking at this which was a really interesting observation that i never really considered Remember how um this is this was this is very true in legends and sort of true in canon though it hasn't been expanded upon as much on screen though in books like Thrawn 2017 it was you know the anti alien xenophobic policies of the empire yes well that would be interesting if it weren't for the amount of aliens that Palpatine was completely willing to work with for his grand plan to succeed. Like, Palpatine himself, I mean, probably he didn't like aliens or anything, and I'm not trying to defend him or anything, but he probably wasn't personally alien, like, speciesist, because he was trained by an immune, Darth Plagueis. His right hands in the Senate were a Shagrian, Masamita, and an Abaran, Slime War. His first apprentice was a Dothamirian Zabrak. Uh, he, after Dooku died, his basic, like, his underling between when Dooku died and when Anakin turned was General Grievous, a Kalish. This guy, like, like for building an empire that was so anti-alien, he sure was okay with working with aliens. Yeah, well, I, I think that strengthens, I think that honestly strengthens the allegory of Palpatine, you know, as an authoritarian, strongman, you know, right-wing dictator, because that that is, that is exactly what someone like that in that position would do, regardless of how they actually feel, regardless of who they actually yeah. work with or who they use for their own goals, you know, a guy like Palpatine is going to figure out how to divide people, and, and he's going to, he's going to figure out how to get how to get people fired up, how to get his supporters fired up by scapegoating and spreading hate and, uh, and animosity and his Absolutely. human, his kind of human superiority, human privileged centric policies and 
views in that he expresses often that's just that's just one way of his to do that regardless of whether or not he actually believes in it it could all be grift but that doesn't change yeah. I, I think that actually honestly strengthens the allegory like i said oh absolutely i i wasn't i'm not like surprised by it or anything i just like yeah. never thought of it in those terms where like he yeah. was, like the the empire enslaved made a big deal about enslaving a lot of alien populations and yet alien yeah. people were instrumental to his rise Jar Jar. Yeah. New Gun Ray. <laughs> Masabetta like, Slymore, yeah. Yeah. Thrawn. The, the Thrawn, but like, you know, Thrawn's a little, yeah. Um, oh, also, I was just looking to uh, for something else. I'm uh, making a correction. Uh, Lucas did not com- uh, compare Dick Cheney to Darth Vader. Lucas compared Dick Cheney to Sidious. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um. Uh, what was I gonna say? But um, next is best, um, uh, best portrayal. I spoke about Tim Curry's portrayal. Ian Abercrombie obviously did a good job of Palpatine. Um, Trevor Duvall did him in the Lego stuff. Um, Sam Witwer did him in some of the Lego stuff. And so no, it's really? Rebels. It's not Lego. Not Lego. It's Sam Witwer did him in Rebels. Shout out to Sam Witwer, man. He can, um, he can do it all. He does it he all. He can do it all, but... We all know who three, the one true Sidious a, a, is. A count of three, let's name our favorite Darth We don't, we don't even portrayal. have to... One, two, three, Ian McDermott. Ian McDermott. Yeah, come, I mean, come on. on. Let's, let's Look, be real. I want to preface this with shout out to Ian Abercrombie and shout out to Tim Curry because I think Palpatine is an amazing character. He is a truly amazing character in the Clone Wars. So many of the best moments of... of of character development moments that deepen the significance and enjoyment of the prequels for me are moments that Palpatine is involved in where we see Palpatine's masterful manipulation it just being such a slippery snake you know pitting the Jedi against each other pitting the pitting the senators the clones against each other doing everything in his power to just 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 position himself to rise up but come on I mean yeah but it, come it's on. Ian McDermott it's Ian McDermott uh, it's um uh the the ones that have been great for me so great to see for me is where where he where McDermott's appeared in the new canon. Obviously, the big one is Rise, but also season four of Star Wars Rebels, um, uh, Tales of the Jedi, The Bad Batch, um, Obi Wan Kenobi. That's all him. Uh, still still cranking out great lines as Ian McDermott. Yeah. Um, as as Palpatine. Um, the, vo- right. the voice is iconic. His his the portrayal voice is iconic. as well. The portrayal you know. is iconic. He's 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 fantastic. The acting Best is iconic. Best piece of media. What are you going with? I'm going with Revenge of the Sith. I think yeah, this me is too. Peak, this is peak yeah, Palpatine. You know, I'm too weak. Unlimited power. I I henceforth name I... you Darth Vader. I mean, come on. There's so many amazing moments. It's just Palpatine at his best, and we see I, I we don't see be... him come out from behind the mask and we see the transformation and it's just it's bone chilling it really is i i i'm a bit like gun shy about complimenting revenge of the sith because of the reputation that is cultivated online as the dude bro's favorite star wars movie well Um, i don't don't think that should impact what what you say i think we know Every, I'm, everyone no, I'm, listening I'm, to this, I yeah, know, no, you know, I'm, we, we know saying, who you are. We know who you no, stand absolutely. for. I'm not saying, you don't have to I'm censor saying, yourself because of what other people say. No, I'm not trying. I'm not saying I'm censoring myself. It's it, 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 it's just like, like, like Revenge of the Sith. It's like just a little twitch in my brain because I like so many dude bros. I've heard call, call like compared to the Mona Lisa and shit like that. <laughs> the greatest piece of art. Like, I'm like, calm down, everybody. Some people just go but, nuts for that movie. I don't quite understand. But, yeah, I don't movie, understand. Though. I don't understand it either. But. It is, I think, in my opinion, the most Shakespearean Star Wars movie. And Ian McDermott, if I'm not mistaken, was a Shakespearean actor by trade. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Actually, actually, I actually once watched a uh, a recording of an English stage production of Macbeth in which yeah. he played a major role. Yeah. So it makes incredible sense to me that McDermott's best performance in Star Wars is the one where he gets to be the best, yeah. the, the the most Shakespearean. So and most that's what I love, love about Palpatine old in school, Revenge dramatic. of the Sith. 
is that there's no part of Palpatine that you don't see in Revenge of the Sith. Like, you get to see all facets of his character. You get to see a lot of facets of, of Palpatine, uh, so of Chief Palpatine, the Chancellor. You get to see a lot of Pal facets of Darth Sidious, the Sith Lord. But you also get to see how those two merge together and the gray lines between the character he's playing and the, you know, the, the mask he's putting on and how it's fading off. It, there's ju it, There are just so many, like, again, one of the th great things about a lot of acting forms in Star Wars is um, that Star Wars, and I love it for this, but Star Wars sometimes has some really dumb dialogue. But a great Star Wars actor, and, and there are lots of actors who do this, are people who can make the dumbest Star Wars lines, and again, that's a compliment, but still, sound like they're genius. And that is what Ian McDermott does with every single line he's given in Revenge of the Sith. It's le like... Like, um... Like, like that entire, um... Exchange I'm thinking with him and Anakin in the office when Anakin finally figures out the fucking truth and stops being such mm, an idiot. I love that scene. I love that scene, You're yeah. the Sith Lord. Are you going to kill me? I would certainly like to. I know you would. <laughs> I can feel your anger. Like, that scene shouldn't work, but McDermott and Hayden make it do. Like, make it work. Um, I think something that, that, I think something that McDermott does very well is just knowing how to just toe the line and ride that, ride that perfect gray area between earnesty and just complete over the top melodrama, and I think he does that to extraordinary effect. Um, in Revenge of the Sith, especially, you know, with the with the dialogue and the scenes that he is given to work with. All right, let's uh, let's do our three best allies. You go first with your number three for best allies. Three best allies. Number three, I am going to go with Thrawn. I love, I love their relationship. Me Thrawn, who you do? In the Thrawn trilogy the thrawn ascendancy no not thrawn ascendancy no the, the new thrawn the, trilogy the new, the new thrawn, thrawn trilogy yeah that's what i mean not the ascendancy trilogy the old new thrawn trilogy is what i'm talking about you know in um 2017 alliances and treason yeah alliances and treason i think they have such an interesting relationship and i think it's it, it, it's it's just wonderful it's just wonderful to see how palpatine has such an influence on Thrawn and how Thrawn changes so much by hanging out with Palpatine and by working for the Empire. And it's not always easy to see, but when you take a step back, when you finish Treason, it is striking. It is, yeah, it, it's something that, like, I know there have been a lot of varied debates on the issue of how Thrawn is portrayed, especially now that he's on the big screen, or the small screen, in um, Ahsoka, um, where a lot of people don't like how Dave Filoni and the fellow writers that, he, that he's worked with treat Thrawn as this more conventional villain instead of this complicated anti-hero figure that Timothy Zahn wants him to be. Um, I don't know if I would... Hmm. Okay. But, okay. But here's the thing. I will always, like, I'm, I'm always going to go to bat for Dave's version because, look, Thrawn could have been as good as good could be. But he made a deal with the devil. That never turns out well. Like, 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 he, he, he made a deal with the devil and he was the devil's servant for many, many years. Whatever good intentions anybody could have, you made a deal with the Star Wars version of Satan. Like, yeah. I mean, I think, what do you think I is going to happen? I think it's absolutely clear that the version of Thrawn that we see, you know, in later Star Wars Rebels, and that also, and, and, and for that, you can also make the argument of, well, you know, it makes sense that Thrawn is portrayed a bit more villainously in Rebels, you know, given that this is a story being told from the Rebels' perspective, and... Thrawn is the greatest existential existential threat that they have ever faced. This is not yeah. the Thrawn of... This is not the Thrawn who was recently exiled, you know, from, yeah, no. from the Chiss Ascendancy. This is the Thrawn who has been... This is the Thrawn who is 
been loyal to the emperor and loyal to the empire for many years and has worked closely with the emperor and other really, really profoundly evil and despicable people like Tarkin. And that, I think, has profoundly influenced his own morals and his own his own um, way of seeing and being in the world. And I think it's impossible to discount that. I, I do think there is something to be said for, you know, maybe Thrawn's being portrayed a bit on the villainous side, but honestly, I think like 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 in in Ahsoka, what is there to really suggest that he is so different? You know, besides, you know, just just the the subtleties of how um how Lars Mikkelsen you know chooses to portray his character. Maybe it's that smirk. People 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 respond to that as if it's villainous because I think it is. So I I don't know I don't know I I think. Yeah. Maybe people are reading into that too much, but I think that there are there are good explanations out there to kind of justify the change that he has gone through. All right, you ready for my number three? Go for it. Who could it possibly be? Okay, take a shot, everybody. Palpatine, uh, Vader has just, Darth Vader um, has just um, met back up with Sabe and a bunch of the handmaidens uh, of Padme, who are still alive, in the events between episode 5 and 6, and he can sense that Vader is starting, Palpatine can sense that Vader is starting to get a little bit conflicted, and feelings feelings that maybe a Sith shouldn't feel. Um, and so he tasks him, so he basically strands him on Mustafar, um, without like, much equipment at all. Um, and Vader is looking for this, um, Prophet, dark side prophet on Mustafar called the Eye of the Webish Bog. But <laughs> Palpatine's not just going to let him search for the Eye of the Webish Bog in peace. No, he's going to send one of his best assassins after Vader, too. And that assassin is named Ochi of Bestoon. I mean, come on! Did you really expect me <laughs> to not put Ochi of Bestoon on this list? Oh, of course. Ochi of Bestoon, yeah. Ochi of Bestoon, baby. It's always Ochi. O Ochi relates back to Palpatine. Palpatine sent him, sent him back to kill his, his um, you know, his strand cast and his wife. Like, like Ochi is 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 incredibly connected with Palpatine. Everything he does is because he admires the and, and like has this admiration um, for this raw, dark power that Sidious possesses. Um, he served city as as early as the Clone Wars. Um, he hunted Jedi. Um, yeah, no, it's 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 Ochi of Best Dude for me. Come on. Um, so yeah, sorry. Whoops. Uh, that's 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 what you get. Take a shot. Take a shot. Um, <laughs> uh, because I because I mentioned the Best Dude boy. All right, you're number two. I'm gonna go with Count Dooku, Darth Tyrannus for number two, the the ill-fated apprentice of Sidious. I mean, aside from thinking, I I like Count Dooku. I think he's a very cool character, a very interesting character. I do too, but I will Sith admit I did don't not turn yellow. You know, there's there's a lot about him that's interesting. I think especially, excuse me, sorry. In terms of. Sidious's relationship to him, you know, that's something that I'm very curious about, and I want to learn more about. But I love, I love seeing them kind of work together in the Clone Wars. You know, Sidious, Tyrannus, you know, pretty oblivious of what, what Sidious, you know, is a, uh, is about to do to him. You yeah. know, it's great, it's great. Um. All right. Uh. Next. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Next, my number, number two. two. Yeah. I'd say Palpatine's top enforcer of policy in the Galactic Empire. And that is Will Huff Tarkin. Mm. Will Huff Tarkin is number two. Um, uh, and, you, like, I, 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 I really like Tarkin as, like, that extension of Palpatine's will. He carries all of the political and policy positions of Palpatine. And carries it out in, in his own very cruel, very, you know, 
efficient but bloodthirsty and sadistic manner. Uh, yeah. The Tarkin doctrine that fueled the Empire and how, you know, in, in canon, how, you know, his, his, um, his, his, his um, childhood on Iryadu and how hard that was for him shaped him into the bloodthirsty and cruel and sadistic person that he that he became um during the republic's age and then of course during the empire's age but in but when um but like uh in legends this is interesting he had a son tarkin had a son uh and his son defected from the empire to join the rebels uh and uh uh no, I don't think his son defected. No, his son didn't defect. Here's what it was. His son was serving in the Empire honorably, and then Sidious had his Imperial agents kill him wow. to harden Tarkin up, but Tarkin <laughs> thought it was rebels. But Tarkin was told it was rebels, and he believed it. So he, be wow. so however cruel he was before that, he just became like ten times as evil and like self-serving because of the pain of losing his son, which was manipulated by the Emperor his, this entire time. Um, wow insane it, it's it's absolutely crazy i might have that story a little bit wrong but um but i will correct this in the description if i uh when i look it up afterwards but yeah tarkin for me as the brutal enforcer of palpatine's will all right my number one i think we know what it's gonna be i is it the same as my wait like wait, i just want to make sure it's the same as mine i think it is <sighs> Yep. Yeah, we can just talk. Both talk about this. I Who think but Anakin Vader, Skywalker, Vader slash Vader. Anakin is the obvious first choice. I mean, you know, the the I, as I know you love to mention the Book of Sith, where Sidious claims that the greatest monster he ever created was Darth Vader, and yeah. it is one of Sidious's truly great achievement. I mean, it's horrible. Like, like it reminds me of like. Of of Mr. Ollivander in the first Harry Potter book, uh, Sorcerer's yeah. Stone, talking about Voldemort, where he's like, Voldemort was a terrible person, great but terrible, and like I'm not saying like he's a great like person in moral quality. I'm saying like he is he has done crazy things, and one of the accomp his, his greatest accomplishments in just how diabolical and evil it was was the corruption of the Chosen One. He pulled that mother's fucker strings like a fucking marionette for oh, yeah. over like for for literal decades he did it that. doesn't even feel it doesn't even feel accurate or sufficient to use the word ally because palpatine really just created and molded vader yeah it, 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 this is it, ally is a bad term just generally i think for Sidious because he doesn't have allies yeah he is the he, he, he is the Sith. He is all the he, Sith. He is the rule of one. Yeah, he he is he 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 has pawns, but like you know, allies is our best approximation of what we're talking about. You know, like that that's the terminology we use for the series, and these are our best approximations. But yeah, what is there to say about Vader and Palpatine's relationship that cannot be said in the Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, Revenge of the Sith, and Return of the Jedi? Like, yeah. it, it, it is it is one of the craziest, most haunting. Um, actually, I think that's what, another reason why I maybe subconsciously picked Sidious because as we're recording this, we're recording this before Halloween, but we'll put it out after Halloween. So I thought like a spooky character or a spooky season would be fun. Um, but yeah, Palpatine and Vader's relationship. Again, we'll we'll keep talking about it as we get further into the Star Wars timeline because we've really only seen the relationship as Vader once now in Sith, but we'll see it again in Obi Wan Kenobi and in um, obviously the OT and in Rebels. Uh, but yeah, it it like like it's just that image of them. You know, uh, of Palpatine Vader walking through the Imperial procession on the second Death Star and Return of the Jedi. Like, oh, yeah. It, it's a classic Star Wars image. Like, what else can you really say? Yeah. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. And they're, they're, all right. That's the backbone of Star Wars right there. Yeah. It's, <laughs> in it's, many ways. Yeah. 
uh this relationship yeah all right best enemies number three for you number three This is tough for me to say. I know you're not going to agree. We got to go with Mr. Purple Saber himself, Mace Windu. All right. This party's over. You're under All arrest. Right. I respect it. I, 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 I respect it. I can I'm see just saying he... he almost had Palpatine. If Anakin didn't come in and do the stupid thing, he had Palpatine. Yeah. That's and, all and, I'm and, saying. And Windu was, of course, one of Palpatine's greatest obstacles to his plan, which he definitely yeah. maneuvered around Windu. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Like they, they um, had I, beef during the Clone yeah. Wars. It wasn't like do, they just like Yeah. Do I have do I have Windu on my list? No, I don't. But <laughs> do I understand how you have Windu on your list? Yeah. If you this better. was like a 10 best enemies, probably you'd be on mine. But it's not, it's three. So yeah, it's not basically. Yeah. Um, What's your number three? My number three is another person whose name starts with the letter M that was willing to speak out against Palpatine. Oh, Mon Mothma, uh, which is is like this is funny. So on our Mon Mothma episode, I put Palpatine at number one for her greatest enemy, and here she is at number three for his greatest enemy. So even for him, like the leader of the rebellion, he has bigger priorities to deal with than that. Like that's not she doesn't even get she doesn't even get into the top two. She has to be a number three, you know what I mean? But like, it's yeah. undoubted, it's undoubtedly true. Pal- Mon Mothma was the leader of the movement that brought Palpatine down. And, and, and you know, obviously set a, lot, set a lot of things in motion for the movement that brought him down the second time. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Mon was like, like, there's no wonder why, it, it's no... There's no wonder why Palpatine was so incredibly paranoid about her, and why you know, uh, and how we see in Andor her drivers are being replaced to spy on her, and like they're constantly watching her and monitoring her everywhere, and why she had to go on the run instantly after after saying that the Empire did some bad things. Um, you know, th- this why she, she had is, to give her husband a fake gambling addiction. Why she had to give her husband a fake gambling addiction. Why? Why? Why she had to? But because because Mon was, I mean, truly really one of the the biggest things that brought cities down, and her role in that was like instrumental. Uh, yeah. So my third is Mon Mothma. Your number two. My number two. Now, I realize I made a major mistake on my list and left out someone who I really didn't have. So I'm gonna switch my list around. My number two, Padme Amidala. Interesting. Somebody the else I do not person, have on this list. Palpatine in the Clone Wars. I would argue, maybe the only person, maybe one of the people that he was truly afraid of. Look at the measures he took to try and take her out so many different times. Oh, throughout absolutely. The Clone Wars because she was one of the one people. She was one of the one. What does it make? She was one of the only people advocating for peace. And effectively opening lines of communication with the separatist leaders. She was everything that she was doing went directly against Palpatine's agenda, and that scared him shitless. How many times in the Clone Wars did he try to have her killed? So many, so fucking so many. many. It's quite a few times. I, I don't have the number, but it is. It's quite a few times. And just because she represented Anakin's attachment to the light. Yes. Um. Uh. But he's cleverly manipulated that to turn him to turn, turn the dark. Um, so my number two is not Padme, but it is her daughter. My number two is Leia. Uh, for, I, I see how some might be confused about this one, but hear me out about this. Leia is the very, repre- if Padme is the very representation of what Palpatine fears in the, um, in the, Republic era, which I believe, which is which I believe, then Leia is a fair representation of what Palpatine fears in the subsequent eras, the Imperial eras, and the New Republic and the First Order eras. That spark of hope that Leia represents is yeah. so de- is the thing that brings down Palpatine both times. Um, you know she, um, you know she brings Obi Wan Kenobi back from his depression. 
in um, <laughs> in, in Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah, she she she's a freedom fighter and a uh, rebel ally who outwits the Empire at every turn. By the time she's like 15, 16, she is a fearless leader. She's been trained by the best Mon and Bale on how to do this. Um, uh, she, you know, you know, she was the, she was also the backup in case Luke failed. Um, she then tried as hard as she could to make the New Republic as Palpatine proof of an institution as possible. That didn't work because of a bunch of other reasons. Um, and so who did Palpatine target after he was defeated the first time? It was Leia's kid. Yep. It was she, he was targeting Leia more than anybody else because he knew, because he knew how dangerous she was and still is to her Absolutely. To his ultimate plan. Um, the thing that really turned me around on this one is like, and and, and uh, this is something that um, friend of the show Alden Diaz pointed out to me, which is a really great point. There are only a few times that that Palpatine is really truly scared or thrown off his game in Star Wars saga. One of them is by Padme when she's announcing she's going back to Naboo. Like I don't think he was expecting that one. Yeah. But the other one is in that uh is in that hologram discussion with Pride at Rise of Skywalker. The princess of Alderaan has once again disrupted my plans. Yeah. By her giving his her, her giving her life to save her son. So now the apprentice that he thought he had just been robbed from him. And the and his own granddaughter who eventually takes him down was trained by Leia. The whole movement that saw what he was doing with the First Order and his proxies for anybody else led by Leia. Yep. Leia is the ideological nemesis of everything Palpatine re represents. And yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. I also think I want to I want to correct some of the things that I said about Padme. I realized that it it occurred to me that no, Palpatine actually probably did want to keep Padme alive, but he did want to silence her because she was still very detrimental to his agenda oh, and his plan. Yeah. Um, and I think it was actually I was actually conflating that a little bit. I think it was Dooku who probably directly wanted her dead, and it probably. was Palpatine yeah. who just wanted her her message to not spread as much. Even if though Palpatine he really had the wanted plan. Padme dead, she would have been dead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like this, like yeah. I mean, this just comes back to the the unanswerable question, in my opinion, of just how much control did Palpatine really have over the particulars of everything that happened? Was it super granular? Was it not? We don't really know. Yeah. In a lot of cases, there there's no yeah. real there's no there's no real confirmation one way or the other. So we kind of have yeah. to fill in the gaps number hey. one number one go ahead oh with my number one first yep i am a jedi like my father before me wow the man we have, who we brings have down palpatine list we have completely different lists luke skywalker he may not have had you know his direct confrontation his, his direct period of uh, his period of direct we being enemies of Palpatine may not have been long, but I mean, he did what no one else could. He took down the monster, and he did so by directly rejecting Palpatine's temptations, correcting, correcting the sins, the mistakes of his father, Anakin, and by doing the right thing. He was able to bring Anakin back to the light side, and together, they defeated Emperor Palpatine. Need I say more? I think this is the first time that, that one of these lists has been completely different between the two of us. I know because they're it's usually so it's usually so apparent who's going to be on the list. Yeah, but I, I guess no, this but, time it's not. But I'm your, your 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 list is is completely valid. Honestly, like 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 your your list are people I would I would list. I'm probably not at the top three, but like but like you make a lot of great points. Um, well, I'm curious to hear your number, number one, one now. I have waited a long time for this moment. My little green friend. To be fair, Yoda was who I bumped off the list in order to include Padme. Yeah. But yes. So so Yoda. 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 For, for me, like like one of my favorite tools when I was younger was that 
duel in the Senate between Yoda and Palpatine. And it's still a fantastic duel. It's, you know, I just think of, like, Yoda as the ideological opposite of Palpatine. You know, he is the he is the guardian of the light, the same way Palpatine is the attacker of the dark. You know, he is yeah. the soldier of the dark. Like, he is, he, um, Yoda, it, it, it's always been, like, 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 above it all, above every other conflict, it's always been a Yoda-Palpatine thing for me. They die in the same movie. They are in the same number of Star Wars movies, I think. Actually, that kind of complicated by Rise, but whatever. They're in around the same number of, Pal- uh, of Star Wars movies. They're both not in the original, introduced in Empire, further elaborated on in Jedi, and then we get their backstories in Sith. Uh, in in the prequels, I mean, uh, they, they both get new voice actors in the Clone Wars. Like they're they're just very parallel to me, um, yeah. in in Star Wars just as a whole. It's also colored by, of course, that Yoda's my favorite Star Wars character, but um, but like just the idea that Yoda, um, and Jared, I swear to God, Jared the Dark Jedi, if you were listening to this podcast, I know what you're going to say, Yoda did not lose that duel. He didn't lose the duel. In a straight one-to-one lightsaber fight, I would bet on Yoda. And it, at the very least, Palpatine is not like, like, look, would could Palpatine defeat Yoda? Absolutely. But in this duel, the one of the only reasons Yoda like fared as badly as he did was because he was carrying the weight of the entire Jedi Order's fall on his shoulders. And that obviously hampered his ability to use the Force. Sidious, on the other hand, was on cloud fucking nine after his grand plan just worked. Yeah. Um, Yoda was uh, Yoda was trying to ball with a broken heart, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't usually end so, well. so Yoda loses against Palpatine. You know, he retreats against Palpatine and, and Sith. Um, and then he spends the next 20 years basically pulling a Palpatine on Palpatine doing a major grand plan with these twins, which again, manipulation to side, which, you know, there's a whole other topic about Yoda, Yoda's not perfect, but he pulls a Palpatine on Palpatine, he engineers Palpatine's destruction, and the destruction of the Sith, in the same uh, calm, uh, you know, backup plan for a backup plan way that Palpatine did to engineer the destruction of the Jedi and the Republic in the prequels. And yeah. that's why Yoda's my number one. Fair enough, man. Because he Yoda. pulls a Palpatine on Palpatine. I, in, a, in a way, I think. Yeah. I think you're right. You can make that argument. All What's right. What's next? Best moments. Best five moments. All right, go with mm. your number five. Number five. All right, I've got my number five. You ready? All right, now go yeah. ahead. Yeah, number five. My number five. In the rise of Skywalker, long have I waited. Palpatine's long reveal waited. on Exegol. You know, there's a lot of not one of my favorite Star Wars movies. Bringing Palpatine back, not one of my favorite creative decisions. But this this scene, you know, the the creepy lighting, the the Exegol setting, everything. I mean, it's 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 masterfully done. It's the way it's executed. It's so it's so kick ass. It's so cool that I, I can't really I can't really complain. I, I think it's freaking awesome. And uh yeah, that's why it's number five for me. Jacob complimenting the Rise of Skywalker, a day I never thought I'd see. I knew it would happen eventually. I knew you'd come around. Drink it in, um, man. Drink it it's, in. It's fan it's fantastic. It's great, it. great, great, great you feeling. It. Palpatine-esque maneuvers on this one. <laughs> uh no I I have stuff from Rise on my list, but it's not up till higher, so I'm gonna Reserve talking about it, as as you're as you're no doubt surprised. My pa- rise Palpatine stuff is up higher. Um, yes. Uh, number five, um, comes from a non live action Palpatine mm. um, moment. Actually, there are two of them on my list that are not in live action. There are two of them that are animated. Uh, number five is a very recent one. This is from a piece of Star Wars that was released. In the last two years, it was released last calendar year. No, 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 sorry. It was not released last calendar year. It was released 
in the last year, in this calendar year, in 2023. And that is Palpatine's Machia- Machiavellian maneuver at the end of Truth and Consequences. Um, mm. the, the second part of the two-parter in the mid-season of season two of The Bad Batch, where he where the Bad Batch gather all this great evidence with Senator Chushi and these other clones uh, that, that Palpatine, uh, that the Empire ordered the destruction of Kamino, and Palpatine's like, oh no, you guys, look what one of my officers ran off and did. That's so terrible. Um, and 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 all those clones just followed him and did that. Imagine if they could do that. Do you really want clones who 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 will refuse orders like that in your army? I think we should go with Tarkin's idea for these stormtroopers, don't you think? Yeah, so so diabolical. Just oh no, <laughs> something happened that totally disproves my point. But we should still do exactly what I want to anyway. Oh no, like, like honestly, like. And no offense with um with to the Clone Wars because I love Palpatine's scheming and stuff there. But honestly, like when I compared the um compared this maneuver to the maneuvers of the Clone Wars and how I felt like it was so right with the Clone Wars, that's not true. This maneuver does not fit in with the Clone Wars. This maneuver is better than any maneuver Palpatine pulled in the Clone <laughs> Wars. Like this maneuver, like I just remember sitting there after I watched this episode. Um and and watch Palpatine just absolutely I, I pull I, I I I said I said this in my notes. I literally called it the Uno reverse card speech. <laughs> yeah. Um uh, like 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 literally it just goes no you. Um and it's just such a masterful like again the writers of the episode did a fantastic job. Ian McDermott did a fantastic job delivering that dialogue. Oh yeah. What a damn good moment. It, oh, yeah. That's the thing with Palpatine. This 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 actually this section is very hard for me. Because Palpatine's had so many fantastic moments that, yeah. like, even my number five is like a top tier Star Wars moment for me. Yeah, absolutely. Right, your number four. My number four, I am going to go with. Have you ever heard the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? It was something I was thinking about no. earlier this episode, and I realized I hadn't put it on my list. Um, and I felt really ter- terrible about myself, but I'm glad you did. Well, depending on who you ask, and depending on depending on what mood Give me a I second. am in, Jacob, Jacob, can 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 you just hang on for a second? Yeah, sure. Oh no, I know it's coming. Can you hear the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? No, I thought not. It's not the story the Jedi would tell you. It's a Sith legend. Darth Plagueis was a dark lord of Sith, so powerful and so wise. He could use the Force to influence the Midichlorians to create life. Such a knowledge of the dark side, he could even keep the ones he cared about from dying. He could actually save people from death. The dark side of the Force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. What happened to him? He became so powerful, the only thing he was afraid of was losing his power, which eventually, of course, he did. Unfortunately, he taught his apprentice everything he knew, and his apprentice killed him in his sleep. It's ironic. He could save others from death, but not himself. How could... Is it possible to learn this power? Not from a Jedi. Perfect. Love it. Ignore all the memes. It's just like, 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 it, it's funny how that became a meme of everything to me because that, I, I truly believe like that, that like conversation p- between them is just perfect. It lays out the themes of that movie so goddamn yeah. well. Um, and it's, it's just, like, it's just that like dark whimsy that Palpatine provides. Like, it's really, da- it hits the spot, man. It hits the fucking spot. Sorry if I saw your thunder there. No, no. I mean, hey, you you have a very solid Palpatine impression, <laughs> so you should you should toot your own horn sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Um. But, but what a moment! What 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 a monologue! Yeah. What like like what what a fantastic! Anything else you had to say about it? But... I just think it's the crescendo, and especially after the Clone Wars, we really get to see this. But it's 
it's just the crescendo of all the little ways that Pal big ways too and little ways that Palpatine has just been pushing Anakin's buttons, pulling his strings closer and manipulating and him closer throughout the corners, closer. you know, just driving that wedge in between him and the Jedi, making putting him closer and closer, putting that put it putting himself closer and closer to Anakin, you know. Yeah. And fantastic. and depending on who you ask, it's amazing despite being absolutely goofy or because it is absolutely goofy. Um, but. let's see. Um, my number four. Good, good. Your hate has made you powerful. No, fulfill your destiny and take your father's place at mm. my side. Never. I'll never turn to the dark side. You failed, your highness. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. Hear me out about this one. Is this, an, is this, for me, like, a great moment? One of the great moments of Star Wars? Yes, 100%. But my reason for putting it this low is that it doesn't have a whole lot to do with Palpatine. For me. For me, it's about mm. the that, that scene and that entire sequence, which is one of my favorite in Star Wars, in media in general, in film in general, is not about Palpatine that much at all it's about luke and vader it's about luke seeing the good in his father and acting like he knows that yoda how yoda and ben would want him to act yeah and him and him you know using the force not for knowledge or de for, for knowledge and defense and not for attack not to not give in to his inner emotions and to do the selfless thing, and that's what brings Vader back, is the selfless love that he has for his father, and the belief that yeah. he can be the person who he once was. Um, Palpatine is, of course, the embodiment of evil in that, and that's very important, but you don't really get a lot about the embodiment of evil in that specific sequence. So that's my justification for putting it solo. Again, great moment. Probably like it more than most of the ones I, I have higher than it on the list, but not because of Palpatine. Yeah. It's my number three. Let's see. My number three moment is from the Clone Wars. I had to include an animated moment in here. Palpatine pulling up to Mandalore and absolutely destroying Maul and Savage Opress. Just toying oh, with them, yeah. you know? He just, he comes in, he's got a big old wicked Jeez. grin on his face the Have entire mercy. time. There comes in with his lightsabers. No and to be, to be, it, to Maul's credit, Maul puts up a good fight, but Palpatine's just, he's playing with them. He's got his two sabers going. Doesn't, dark saber, doesn't matter. Maul double blading it, doesn't matter. I, I will say that, he's I, done. I wouldn't say that Maul puts up a good fight. I think Maul only lasted that long. Because Sidious wanted him to last that long. Perhaps. I just thought, um, given everything that Maul had been built up, the, yeah. the kind of power oh, that yeah. Maul had built up during the Clone Wars, I just thought it was just an amazing moment for Sidious and just truly showing his his terrifying power. And also showing you know him stepping out of, you know, just pulling the strings in the shadows. You know, every so often, you know, he wants to just just go ballistic, you know, and you just see... And I know, I know this is a Galaxy of Heroes ability too for his um his kit. Death you stroke. see the sadistic glee the sadistic that he has. Glee, That's the best yeah. way I can describe it. The sadistic glee that he has when he's just he's he's in it. He's just Deathstroke is his he's basic this unstoppable um, force. What of is death. that AOE that he does in the episode? Demoralizing blows. Yeah. Demoralizing blows where he spins the sabers. He spins his off. sabers on the floor like he's just showing off, you know? He's just playing that's around. The, that's the thing that um that I've heard a lot of it, uh people who analyze the lightsaber duel. Like that's one of my favorite things about Palpatine, is because he's so powerful in the force, nothing he does with like the lightsaber ultimately like he does moves in all of his appearances with that he uses the lightsaber that are fucking stupid. But it doesn't matter because he's just that powerful. Yeah. You know, there's a Drake line that uh yeah, Eli, I apologize because I know I know you're not a huge fan of uh, Mr. Aubrey Graham, Mr. Drake, but one of the perils of making money is that you can afford to be dramatic. 
Now, I think that in Palpatine's case, it's one of the that perils is, of I'll, I'll give that being a force Drake. demigod is you can afford to be dramatic. And Palpatine yes. is the ultimate drama queen. And especially yep. in this sequence, he is. And that's why I love it so much. What's your number three? Uh, my number three, let's... That will be all, Grand Admiral. I apologize for not being there in person, but governing the galaxy takes up so much of my time. The actions of your rebel friends require a firm hand to ensure that there is order on Lothal. As for your parents, allow me to offer what might have been and what might yet be. Uh, mine is his temptation of Ezra Bridger in Family Reunion and Farewell Part 2. Um, mm. the, it, it's a beautiful... Oh, actually, no, it's Family Reunion and Farewell Part 1, actually. Never mind. Oh, actually, no. I'm not sure if it's Part 1 or Part 2. I forget. But it's it's in Family Reunion and Farewell. Um, the two part of the end of Rebels. Um, Ian McDermott kills it. Like, again, I, I'm, I'm a sucker for the that transition from the kindly old man to the vicious cold hearted fascist autocrat that we know and despise as Palpatine. Like I'm a sucker for that transition and he plays it so well with those transitioning holograms the transitioning holograms, the flickering holograms where he's constantly switching between Palpatine and Sidious. So damn good, one of my favorite moments. That's the other animated moment on my list, but yeah, end of Rebels. Yeah, that's a great moment as well. It absolutely is. By the way, let's let's acknowledge the fact that so far you've mentioned Rise and I've mentioned Rebels. <laughs> yes, we have. We yeah. have. Your number two. My number two moment. Unlimited power. That entire moment, sequence. I also did not have that on my list. Really? I feel like yeah, this I... is like Pal Palpatine's peak as a character, as a force, you know? he He's he's fighting Windu. Anakin rushes in. He convinces Anakin to disarm Windu. Anakin, Anakin, Windu get out me! Windu. I'm doing... Yeah, like that whole thing. This is like we see the mask come off. The mask of this kindly old man that 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 Anakin has known him to be. We see that melt away. and We see him reveal himself to be this terrifying lord of the Sith. But it's too late. It's too late for Anakin. He's committed an unforgivable act. You know, he's he's stepped over the line and he he has to pledge himself. He 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 feels he has to pledge himself to Sidious. Just um in order to try and save Padme. And that's, you know, we, we see Sidious put the hood up. That whole sequence is just I mean, I mean, that's that's kind of the epicenter of it all. That's that that's the peak. That's it right there. Doesn't really get better than that. Prequels, yeah, at least. I didn't have it on my personal list, but well, I'm surprised. Actually, I'm really well, surprised. I had another prequel moment on my list, but higher. But we'll see. All right. Number two. Long have I waited oh, for my yeah. grandchild to come home. I That's never wanted you dead. I wanted you here, Empress Palpatine. You mm. will take the throne. It is your birthright to rule here. It is in your blood. Our blood. I just put for my number two on my list everything on Exegol. I'm specifically talking about in the third act of Rise of Skywalker. Perfection. Everything Palpatine represents. Everything that Rey has to go up against. Perfection. I cannot sing my praises enough of, of the Exegol sequences in the Rise of Skywalker. I love them so dearly and like again, the the hammer horror villain that Palpatine is, you know, with hooked up to all these wires until he literally sucks the life energy out of Rey and Kylo to become the eternal emperor, the Sith eternal emperor, um, with it with those you know those nice those those nice red robes and stuff like that. Like that's the shit, man. That's the ultimate Sith power. I dig it. I dig Sith mm. like Palpatine's yeah. role in that. In there, there's no Palpatine like in there. That's all. That movie is all fucking Sidious. There's no facades. There's no like political maneuvering or anything like mm. that. It's just pure devious, maniacal Sith Lord in that movie, and I fucking dig it. 
Yeah. Zero Palpatine, one hundred percent Sidious. It's like the opposite of yeah. the Phantom like Menace. Like Phantom maybe. Menace, yeah. Yeah. Basically. Um uh well actually no, I'd say opposite of like Attack of the Clones, because we'd actually do Sidious. Actually, we, we do see Sidious for a little while. That, that quite is quite a bit. So yeah, that opposite of, of clones. Um yeah. Uh yeah. So many banger lines that that, that Sidious just delivers. Um weak like your parents. Like it's holy shit. Um uh what else? Um nothing will stop the return of the Sith and that like crazy storm of force lightning. And of course then of course the infamous I am all the Sith and I Yeah. I'm all the Jedi. Ah, yeah, it's great. Fantastic. All right, you're number one. I'm curious to see what this but is. The only moment better than that. Mentioned it a little while, a little bit before. Return of the Jedi, the throne room. Yeah, Palpatine, I thought you were going to go there. Presiding over Luke and Vader, father and son, battling it out, revealing that he knows about Leia, egging on Luke to give in to the dark side, showing him what the Empire is doing to his rebel fleet. That is just, in terms of Palpatine as a villain, I know Revenge of the Sith, I said that's his peak, and I think in many ways, as a character, that is. But just as a villain, this is this is, this is is Palpatine at his bone-chilling best. It doesn't get better than this. This is, this is a, he, he has Luke in the palm of his hand. He has him under his thumb until all of a sudden, of course, he doesn't. But what a moment it is. What a moment, yeah. Uh, I, I still maintain where it is on my list, but... Um... Uh, but it's 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 a great sequence. I love all of their dynamics in that scene. I'm really surprised you haven't guessed that this is my first one, or that you haven't put it on yourself, because I feel like this is like this is the first thing I think of when I think of Palpatine. Honestly, one of the first things. The remaining Jedi will be hunted down and defeated. The attempt on my life has left me scarred. And default. Oh. But my assure you, my resolve has never been stronger. Mm. In order to it's ensure the security and continuing stability, the Republic will be reorganized into the first galactic empire for a safe and secure society. Society. Palpatine's transformation of the Republic into the Empire and that speech that he gives is a masterclass in political ma manipulation. It is the culmination of his grand plan. Uh, obviously, we see its after effects of turning the Republic into the Empire, not only in Revenge of the Sith, but also in Star Wars, The Clone Wars, The Bad Batch, Jedi Fallen Order, Obi-Wan Kenobi, The Mandalorian, The Book of Boba Fett, so many other Star Wars stories. Um, I'm kind of lumping it a little bit in with Order 66 as well, though that, that's not... I. I I didn't really say that, but like he he his the, that that final step of you know as you mentioned before, how does a democracy become a fascist regime? How does yeah. a republic become an empire? Um, and 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 of course it's all capped off by and I know some people hate this line and I say to them, "Fuck you, it's brilliant." <laughs> Padme's line afterwards. So this is how liberty dies with thunderous applause. Yeah. As Lucas says himself, democracies mm -hmm. are not taken away. They are given away. Mm. Palpatine didn't just didn't just make the Republic into an empire. He made the Republic into an empire and got the senators to cheer for that. Yeah, he did. And that is the culmination of Palpatine as character growth. Is like it, 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 like like I think the the it's my two top on the list. With Rise and with Sith are the yin and yang of Palpatine. They're the two halves of Palpatine. The number one is the political machinations of Palpatine, and number two is the Sith Lord of Palpatine. And both, to me, are equally important parts of the character. But the operatic nature of again the operatic Shakespearean nature of Red of the Sith is just executed so goddamn well, and that, that entire thing is just so great to me that I just can't help but love it. Yeah, it is great. It is and, great. And 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 like oh, and of course, as as many moments, <laughs> how many times have you like walked out of like 
walked out of like a meeting or something feeling like really like really tired for no explicable reason you're just thinking the attempt on my life has left me scarred and deformed but i assure you my resolve has never been stronger like i feel like we've all had those moments we're like yeah. we're leaving somewhere we really don't want to be and we're just kind of like like we're, we're doing the i'm too weak you don't kill me yeah. <laughs> like i i feel like that's a very like relatable moment at least in the the idea of the gesture if not in like the actual implication um do you have anything else to say about the man the myth the legend darcidius what more is there to say i think i've <laughs> I think said my did, part i'm good i think we did a very uh good um and thorough um things uh announced what we love about darcidius um yeah. that's gonna be it for this episode of star wars and galaxy next week begins season 15 of star wars in the galaxy if you remember solo a star wars story episode 116 of star wars in the galaxy we are going to be talking about the first 14 minutes of solo a star wars story um stay tuned i i think we're gonna get some guests this season of course as well um excited to cover this like like i'm, I'm excited especially um uh, because of all of the Fallen Order stuff we've been doing, um, I'm excited to cover a different part of the Star Wars universe now. I'm Me excited too. to yeah. go to the crime syndicates. The like, you know, we see one lightsaber at the end of this movie, and that's it. Um, like I think variety is fantastic for Star Wars, and I, I, I um, and I, I like that this this show, especially with the timeline stuff allows us to go into this variety. Although I think after Solo, we're going to be getting into a lot of Jedi-focused stuff with Obi-Wan and Survivor, and I think I'm probably going to try and get Young Jedi Adventures in there somewhere. So a lot of laser sword stuff in the future, though not for this season. Um, but in the meantime, you can follow us on Twitter at, uh, at Twitter, Instagram, everywhere at In A Galaxy Pod. You can listen to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, anywhere you listen to podcasts. Um, we'll be there. Um, check out our trivia show at In A Galaxy Trivia on Twitter. Twitter and on our YouTube channel. Um, by the time this comes out, we will have posted um, the Bi Republic versus Sheen Shills. This episode is being recorded before that is that episode has been recorded, but it's going to release after the episode has been released. So that's weird. So I have no idea how it's going to go, but I'm looking forward to it um, and looking forward to our November match. Um, I, I mean, this is coming out in November, but still. Uh, our actual November match, Scotty Holiday versus Jerry the Cannon Junkie. I'm so excited to see how the two of them will um will fare uh in their uh match to go up uh to earn a number one contender shot against Jane Dalton. Uh, very excited about that. Um uh yeah, but in the meantime, may the force be with you. Always. Always. <laughs>